Hello everybody, my name is Mike Guide. In this video we're going to be looking at uh, a, a gravity demonstration, if you will, I put that in quotes, for our sprite struct that we created in our previous videos. I'm going to start off by using the code more or less unaltered from our previous video, uh, the one with the sprite struct demo. You're going to notice a few changes. I'm going to walk you through a couple of the few changes here. Uh, first is that my screen is going to be much bigger, 1020 or 1280, I'm sorry, 1280 by 1024. And I'm also including the math.h library so that I can do some trigonometry. I know a lot of people hate trigonometry, but you got to do it for some of these, uh, some of these more advanced demonstrations. Now I'm going to create two new helper functions for me. The first is going to be void tracked particles. And a little background about how this demo is going to work. Every object on the screen is actually going to move relative to every other object. Every object is going to have a tiny gravitation. It's going to have a tiny gravitational field, if you will, uh, to where other objects are attracted to it. Now, granted, the gravity isn't lessened by distance like it is in the true gravity, but in this instance, it gets the point across. And so every cycle, we need to attract all of the, the, the sprites to each other. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in uh, my array of sprites and the number of sprites. And then another helper function is going to be double angle to target. And this function is actually not mine. I stole this function uh, from one Jonathan Harbour uh, who does a lot of game publications and stuff like that. Uh, I found this uh, function in one of his publications. So uh, if you ever get around to watching this, Jonathan Harbour, I do appreciate that. And supremely hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, okay, so double x1 and double y1 and then double x2 and double y2. Great. Okay. Um, I'm also seeding the, the random number generator, uh, as you can see here. Uh, so we have that. And I, I'm going to start off with just two sprites, um, and then we're going to increase that. So we'll see how two work, and then we'll go from that. All right. We are also loading our images, our Font. Uh, we're still initializing. This isn't changed. Our init sprite hasn't changed, uh, and so we're leaving that as it is. Uh, we also have our uh, our update has not changed. We're still doing our frames per second, and we're still calling update sprites, and we're still drawing our sprites the exact same way. So so far, nothing different. Nothing different. So I'm going to come down here, and we're going to notice a new change here with our init sprites. One minor change, and I, I didn't bother, I'm not bothering to type this all out in front of you because I can just explain it. Uh, we're limiting the scope of where these objects are starting, uh, so they're going to be starting much closer to each other, uh, which is what, uh, what this map here will do. Uh, they're also going to be moving just slightly slower instead of uh, seven that we had in the previous time, to five now. Uh, we have our directions the same, uh, our max frame, all of this, all this information is exactly the same, so we're still using that sprite sheet uh, with the 71 frames of animation. Uh, so that is completely unchanged. All right, great. That's completely unchanged. And our update sprite, we've actually cut some stuff off that, that was not the same, that, that, that is going to be different. Uh, and first off, I want to point out that our animation, 100% the same. Our positioning is almost the same. You will notice we are no longer multiplying velocity x and velocity y by the direction. And the reason I'm doing this is because we don't want the direction modifying how our objects are moving because we want our objects to move relative to each other. So I'm taking direction out of the equation, so I just removed those there. All right. And because direction is no longer there, we have to modify our balance checking, right? Our balance checking had us bouncing off the walls by changing our direction. Uh, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually just change our velocity uh, to achieve that effect. So I'm going to say if sprite.x is less than or equal to zero or sprite.x is 
greater than or equal to width minus sprite dot frame width. If that's the case, I'm going to do sprite dot velocity x time equals negative. One. I could have made this work with direction, took it out just to simplify things. Instead, I'm just working directly with one. Um, and then we're going to do animation direction time equals negative. One. Okay, so that pretty much how you saw it before. Um, I'm going to copy this. We'll use that in a second. And then I'm going to say if uh, sprite dot y is less than equal to zero or sprite dot y is greater than or equal to height minus sprite dot right height. I'll paste that in there. Just change that x to a y. Okay, so that's our new bounds checking. Very similar to our previous one, but I've just taken direction out of the equation. Okay, so so far, um, no different. I mean, this is pretty much, I mean, just this with removing direction and just this the way we initialize things, um, the same as we saw. And we can look here, much bigger window, and our objects are bouncing off the walls, uh, and everything is working like it should. Okay, so, so far, nothing's different. So here's where the difference comes in this demo, and that's with the two helper functions that we just created. And I'm going to do these in reverse order here. First, I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to come up here, copy the headers, save myself some typing. Back down to the bottom here, paste those. So I'm going to do my angle to target first. And my angle to target is simply going to be double delta x, which is a change in x, so x2 minus x1, and double delta y equals y2 minus y1. So we just got the change in x uh, and the change in y, and then I'm just going to return this C++ math library trigonometry function, a tan2. Right. Uh, now this function a tan2 uh, basically stands uh, as a variation of the arc tangent function. Okay, and actually, just just right now, I, I looked it up on Wikipedia so I could read you the actual definition, and you don't get my model, you know, stammering definition. And basically, the variant of the arc tangent function, which is the a tan2, uh, states that for any real arguments x and y not both equal to zero. A tan 2 is the angle in radians between the positive x-axis of a plane and the point given by the coordinates x, y on it. All right, now that sounds like a lot. That, that sounds kind of confusing. But basically, what that means is that it is going to give us the angle, um, quote unquote, between two points, all right? It's going to give us the angle between two points, uh, and oh, it's going to give us the angle of the line between two points and the x-axis. All right, the angle between those two lines, and we're going to use those two lines to determine what our angular velocity is, what our our, our ratio of x velocity to y velocity is in this situation for each of these. All right, so I'm going to pass an a tan to delta y comma delta x. All right, great. So that is, like I said, it's going to give us that angle. And now finally, we are going to do our attract particles function, which is simply going to be for int i equals zero, i is less than L sprites, i plus. And what we need to do is we need to examine every single object of this array and we need to compare it to every other object of this array, and we're going to move this object towards every other object. Okay, so I'm going to create a couple variables here. I'm going to do float dvx, which is for the, the delta velocity x, or the change to velocity x, j equals zero, and float dvy, uh, equal to zero as well. 
since I'm examining each sprite against every other sprite, I need to nest a loop. So I'm going to do 4 int j equals 0. j is less than m sprites. j plus. Now I absolutely do not want to compare a sprite object to itself. You remember when I read it off to you here, uh, for the ATAN2, both cannot be 0. Alright? It'll crash. So if we compare an object to itself, it will be zero in both of these, and that's not a good thing. So I need to make sure if <coughs> i does not equal j. We're not comparing objects to themselves. All right, and then I'm gonna do float angle equals. Now I, I could do double angle to target returns back a double, but floats tend to be smaller in memory, right? And I don't need the crazy amount of accuracy that double can give me. So I, I'm just gonna cast it to float implicitly here by doing float angle. And I'm going to do angle to target, and I'm going to pass sprite i dot x sprite i dot y sprite j dot x sprite j dot y. Oh, cool. All right. Um, oh, I see that I, I typed that wrong. Perfect. Uh, angel to target, but angle to target. All right, so that gives us the angle, quote unquote, uh, between these two points. And now all I have to do is I need to figure out the ratio, is maybe the best way I can describe it without going into it, the, the ratio of x component to y component, or the percentage of that angle that represents the y velocity to x velocity. I'm basically taking a, a line that does not directly line up with one of the axes, right? And I'm, I'm breaking that down into essentially a percentage or a, a piece, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do dvy plus equals gravity, the constant uh, that I have not added yet, we'll add that in a second, times sine, the sine function of angle, divided by a thousand. Since our gravity is here, I'll scroll up here, gravity, which I have not added, we're going to write that in right now. Gravity is going to be int gravity equals to 3. We don't want our object moving 3 pixels for every other object on the screen because as you added more objects, the, the attraction would just be so big that these things would just be flying all over the place, right? So we're going to divide it by a thousand, right? Just, just minor draws. Okay, because these things are going to add up real quick. You're about to see that. And I'm going to do dvx plus equals gravity times cosine angle divided by it. All right. And the last thing I need to do is back in my first loop, I'm going to say sprite i dot velocity x plus equals dvx. Notice I'm not setting the velocity equal to dvx, I'm adding the dvx to the velocity. So if a velocity, or the velocity of the object is moving, if say objects are moving away from each other, they're going to start slowing down. dvx will be negative, and they'll start slowing down until they start coming back towards each other. All right, so I'm adding it to. Uh, if I didn't add it, if I just set velocity equal to dvx, it would look right. The object would start coming towards each other until they hit the center, and they would all just stop dead at that spot. And that's not what we want. We want to be a little bit more realistic than that. So I'm going to do sprite of i, or sprite of i, uh, velocity of y plus equals dy. Great. Okay. So our updates are working, our sprite, our drawing functions are working. We've added these two new functions. The last thing we need to do is we need to plug it in. And so what I'm going to do is before I update the position of all of my uh, sprite objects, I'm going to uh, modify their velocities by attracting them to each other. So I'm going to do attract particles, now I'll pass orbs, and num sprites. All right. So every cycle, um, they're going to attract to each other, they're going to update, and they're going to draw. So I'm going to run this here. And we're going to see, now, this doesn't look like, doesn't look like much, all right? 
We're not seeing much. You can see them now they're starting to converge just slightly. The pole is, remember, we're dividing it by a thousand. All right? So they are attracting each other ever so slightly. Uh, it'll take time, but eventually they'll get more into sync with each other. All right? Uh, but there's only two objects. And the gravity is very, very minute. So we can't really see much of a change here. Now let's amp this up a little bit. Let's go from 2 to 100. So now since we're dividing it by 1,000, you know, it's a minuscule pole. Now that pole is going to be significantly greater. And we can see here, look at that. Now we can see how objects are all attracted to each other. We've got this center mass with objects being formed around it. All right? And you can see them changing direction in midair, you know, as, there, as the mass changes and it attracts the particles. All right. And of course, when they bounce off the wall, they kind of get slingshotted further and further out. But you can see now how we can do some pretty neat things using this bright struct. Um, just by modifying a few of our functions, adding some slightly different uh, functionality to it, and how we can just use an array of these sprites uh, to to act upon each other, right? Um, so these sprites, that's effectively what they're doing, they're acting upon each other. And we, we could step this up, we could take this to uh, 200, and you'll see that it's more tightly knit because the, the force they're exhibiting upon each other is so strong now. There's double the amount, there's 200 objects all attracting each other. And so the orb is very, very tight because the force is just so strong. All right. Um, okay, so that concludes uh, my, uh, my uh, struct demo, uh, my sprite struct. Uh, and that's going to conclude this part. And uh, basically in the next part, what I'm going to do is we're gonna, I'm going to take what we've learned with, with sprite animation, uh, and our sprite struct uh, in some of these different in, in bitmaps even you know even all the way back to bitmaps and we are going to get back to our our, our side shooter uh, game that we made in part five and we are going to kind of supercharge that a little bit we're going to get uh, we're going to get some bitmaps in there we're going to get some sprites in there uh, maybe an explosion or two uh, we're going to start making it look you know a bit better so uh, stand by for that that will be in the next part thanks